Most people are slowly killing their engines, and they don't even know it. They ignore the signs, they skip the basics, and then they wonder why the repair costs thousands. But here's the truth. With a few simple steps, your engine could run like new again. Mechanics won't tell you this because it hurts their business, but today, you'll learn it all in this video. Let's start with the yellow check engine light. It's just a light, right? But behind it, your car is quietly trying to warn you that something's wrong. Modern cars have an onboard system called OBD2. It constantly monitors sensors all over the engine. If something is off, like a misfire, a failing sensor, or trouble in the exhaust, it logs a code. That light is just the beginning. A proper scan tells you the real story. And you don't need to be a mechanic to read these codes. Many garages will check them for free. And you can even buy a simple OBD2 scanner online for the price of a dinner out. Plug it into the port under the dashboard Board, usually near the steering wheel. Turn on the ignition and watch the codes pop up. These are called DTCs or Diagnostic Trouble Codes. For example, code P0300 means random engine misfires. Another might point to a bad oxygen sensor or a stuck EGR valve. You no longer have to guess. This tool takes out the guesswork. It gives you the answers. Let's say your car's idling rough. Is it the spark plugs? The fuel injectors? A vacuum leak? A scanner tells you exactly where to look. Sometimes it's as small as a loose hose. Other times it's a failing coil pack. Either way, you're not throwing parts of the problem or wasting money. The real power of a scanner isn't just when things go wrong. It's using it before something big happens. A sensor might be on its way out. The fuel trim might be slightly off. A misfire might not be strong enough to notice yet. But the scanner sees it. You catch it early, you fix it early, and your engine thanks you for it. Once you've scanned and noted the fault codes, you can decide what's next. Maybe you fix it yourself, maybe you head to a garage, but now you walk in knowing exactly what's wrong. You're not at the mercy of someone guessing, you're in control. But let's talk about something even more basic, something that affects every single car, oil. Oil is what keeps your engine alive. It flows through every moving part. It carries away heat. It keeps metal from grinding against metal. But oil doesn't last forever. Over time, it breaks down. It turns dark, thick and sludgy. And that's when the damage starts. Bearings wear out camshafts grind, friction builds up. All because the oil couldn't do its job anymore. That's why changing your oil regularly is the single best thing you can do for your engine. Most drivers should aim for every 10,000 to 15,000 kilometers or once a year, whichever comes first. But if you're mostly doing short city trips or towing, keep it closer to 10,000 kilometers. And if your car has a turbo or high performance engine, definitely don't push it. Doing an oil change isn't complicated. Warm up the engine a little, park on a level ground, put a container under the engine, and screw the drain pipe and let the old oil flow out. Wear gloves, it can get messy. Once it's drained, screw the plug back in. Next comes the filter. Unscrew the old one, some oil might drip out. Take your new filter, rub a little fresh oil on the rubber seal and screw it on hand tight. Then just a little more, but don't go overboard. Now refill the engine with the right grade and amount of oil. Your manual tells you exactly what to use. Start the engine, let it run for a bit. Check the dipstick and make sure the oil level is right. Done. You might notice something right away, a quieter idle, a smoother drive. That's the fresh oil doing its job. Better lubrication, better cooling, less wear on the engine, and less worry for you. Don't forget to handle the old oil properly. Store it in a sealed container and take it to a recycling center or a proper garage. Never pour it down the drain or on the ground. It's illegal and harmful. The next main focus is clean air. Your engine needs to breathe, just like you do. But if the air going in is dirty, everything else suffers. That's where the air filter comes in. It's a small part, but it does a big job, stopping dust and grit before they reach the engine. Over time, though, that filter gets clogged. It starts to suffocate the engine and the performance drops. You'll feel it too. Sluggish acceleration, weaker response when you hit the pedal, and worse fuel economy. Let it go long enough, and it could even damage your engine by making it run too hot and too lean. That's why checking the air filter isn't just a good idea, it's essential. For most drivers, once a year is fine. That's about every 15,000 to 30,000 kilometers, depending on how and where you drive. If you're stuck in traffic often or driving through dusty roads, don't wait, change it sooner. It's simple to do so. Open the bonnet, look for a plastic box on the side of the engine, that's the air box. Pop the lid off by unclipping or unscrewing it, pull out the filter. If it's dark gray or 
still black and filled with bits of leaves or dust, toss it out. Put in a fresh one, make sure it sits perfectly flat, then close everything up. With a new filter, your engine gets clean air again. That means smoother driving, faster response, and a bit more fuel efficiency. You might not notice a huge difference immediately, but over time it protects your engine from serious wear. It also cuts down on the soot that builds up inside, keeping things cleaner and more efficient under the hood. And for the cost of a few euros, it's some of the cheapest insurance you can buy for your car's health. But breathing isn't just about the filter. Once that air gets past the filter, it heads straight to the throttle body. This is the gatekeeper. It opens and closes to let the right amount of air into the engine. Problem is, over time, it gets sticky. Oil vapors and carbon leave a thin film that gums up everything. Suddenly, your car might start to shake at idle, stall when stopping, or feel unsteady when you accelerate. It's a common issue, and luckily, an easy fix. Most cars benefit from throttle body cleaning every 50,000 kilometers or so. If your idle feels rough or your car hesitates when you press the pedal, don't wait. Here's how to clean it. First, make sure the engine is off and cool. Park on a level ground and disconnect the battery. Safety first. Then find the throttle body. It sits between the airbox and the intake manifold. Take off the intake hose by loosening the clamps. Now you can see the throttle plate inside. If your car uses a cable, you can gently open the throttle by hand. If it's electronic, ask someone to press the pedal slightly. You'll see the metal plate open. Grab a can of throttle body cleaner, spray both sides of the plate and inside of the housing, let it soak for a few seconds, then wipe it all clean with a rag or a soft brush. Be gentle, especially around sensors or wiring. If it's really dirty, you might need to spray and wipe a few times. Once it's clean and shiny, put the hose back on and reconnect the battery. Start the engine. Don't worry if it revs high for a few moments, that's normal. The car's computer just needs to adjust. After a short drive, the idle should settle and you'll feel the difference when you press the pedal. No more hesitation no more shaking at traffic lights, just smooth, responsive driving. Next up is MAF. The mass airflow sensor sits quietly between the air filter and the throttle body. It's not flashy, but it tells your engine how much air is coming in so the computer can mix the fuel properly. That's what keeps the engine smooth. But over time, dust and oily residue from the air can coat the MAF sensor. When that happens, it starts lying. It tells the computer the wrong numbers. Suddenly, the car stutters, hesitates when you accelerate, burns more fuel, or even struggles to get moving on the motorway. You might feel it as a jerky throttle, weak acceleration, or see the check-in engine light come on without warning, and if you don't catch it early, it only gets worse. One guide listed engine stuttering, terrible fuel economy and sluggish acceleration, all caused by this one dirty sensor. Luckily, it's not hard to fix. With the engine off, you unplug the electrical connector and unscrew the sensor. No need for tools beyond a screwdriver and maybe a Torx bit. Then, using a special MAF cleaner spray, yes, they make one for this, you hold the nozzle a few inches away and spray the little sensor wires or plate five to ten times. Let it air dry, which happens fast and screw it back in. That's it. You're done in 10 minutes. But the result? Immediate. Most drivers report smoother acceleration, more power, and even better fuel mileage. One user said their throttle response felt like it used to be when the car was new. No more guessing games for the engine, just clean air measured properly. But airflow isn't the only thing that matters. Inside the engine, fuel needs to ignite perfectly. That's where spark plugs come in. In petrol engines, each plug fires a small spark to light the fuel in its cylinder. When the spark is strong, you get smooth power. But over time, the plugs get dirty, carbon builds up, the tip erodes and the spark gets weaker. You don't always notice it at first. Maybe the car takes longer to start on cold mornings. Maybe it hesitates when you press the pedal or the fuel economy drops slightly. But eventually, it becomes obvious. Rough idling, engine shaking, misfires. Champion Auto Parts says the old plugs can cause poor fuel economy, slow acceleration, hard starts and misfires. And they're not wrong. Replacing the plugs makes a real difference. Copper ones usually last around 30,000 to 50,000 thousand kilometers. Modern Iridium plugs can go 60,000 to 100,000 kilometers. But don't just go by the mileage. If you pull one out and it's black and sooty, swap it out. No debate. It's a simple job, even for beginners. Start with one cylinder. Unplug the wire or injection coil. Remove the old plug with a socket. Check it and screw in a new one. Hand tight first, then torque it properly. Put the wire or coil back on and move to the next. Once the new plugs are in, the difference is almost instant. The idle smooths out too acceleration feels tighter, cold starts get easier, fuel economy can improve slightly too, especially if the old plugs were badly worn. It's one of those rare fixes where you feel the result the first time you drive. And if you've got a diesel, no spark plugs, but the same idea applies. Diesels use glow plugs to heat the cylinders and cold starts. They don't fire constantly like spark plugs, but if your diesel struggles to start on cold mornings or blows white smoke at startup, that's usually glow plug trouble. Replace them every 60,000 to 80,000 kilometers and your winter mornings will get a lot easier easier. 
Another main focus should be fuel system cleaning. Engines don't just run, they breathe, like living machines. But over time, that breath becomes rough, strained and tired. You might feel it when your car starts to hesitate at junctions, idle unevenly at red lights, or lose power during a simple overtake. Most people ignore it, but what they don't realize is that this isn't a major failure. It's just your fuel system crying for help. Inside every engine, petrol or diesel, fuel is sprayed in tiny droplets through injectors, but petrol leaves behind carbon. Additives go things up. Slowly, that fine mist turns into clumsy spray. That's when the problems begin. Rough running, sluggish throttle, higher fuel use. AutoZone lists the signs. Stuttering when accelerating, random stalling and that feeling like the engine is working harder than it should. And yet, the solution is almost laughably simple. A bottle of fuel system cleaner. You just pour it into the tank, ideally when it's near empty, then fill up with petrol. That's it. As you drive, the cleaner gets to work. It dissolves the sticky residue, carbon buildup and varnish that's blocking your injectors. You don't need to change your driving style. In fact, highway speeds help circulate it faster. Within a tank or two, many drivers notice a difference. The engine idles smoother, the throttle feels lighter, and that jerky hesitation? Gone. But this isn't magic in a bottle, it's just basic maintenance, the kind that far too many people forget. And if you drive a diesel, there's a twist. You need a cleaner made for diesel engines. And one more thing, drain the water from your diesel fuel filter. There's usually a small screw to do this. Skip it, and trapped water can cause damage. It's also smart to replace the diesel filter on schedule. Diesel systems are powerful, but they don't tolerate neglect. Once you've cleaned the system, it's time to go deeper. The fuel filter is a key suspect in power loss. It usually needs changing every 60,000 to 100,000 kilometers or every two years. If it clogs, your engine starves. No fuel means no power. And in diesel engines, there's often a water trap in the filter. Forget to drain it and you'll end up with more than just poor performance. Then there are the parts that quietly wear out. Belts, hoses, out of sight, out of mind. But if a timing belt snaps, your engine could be wrecked in seconds. Drive belts run accessories like the alternator and water pump. If they crack or fray, you'll see strange dashboard warnings or overheating. It's worth lifting the bonnet and checking. Just a quick look for cracks or glazed surfaces can save you from being stranded. Coolant is another silent killer. It gets old, it breaks down, and when it does, it stops protecting your engine from heat. Overheating causes warping leaks, and big repair bills. So flush your coolant regularly, usually every few years. And while you're under the bonnet, check other fluids too. Brake fluid, transmission fluid, and power steering fluid. Low or dirty fluids mess with performance. Some problems aren't visible, like a stuck PCV valve. It's a small part, but if it's clogged, your engine can idle roughly or burn oil. Replacing it is cheap and easy, and yet many people never do it. The same goes for vacuum lines. These small hoses manage the air pressure in your engine. If one cracks, the air-fuel mix leaves out. That leads to hesitation, poor idle, and misfires. A quick inspection can catch it before it snowballs into a major issue. And while we're talking smoothness, engine mounts matter. They don't affect how fast your car goes, but worn mounts can cause vibration, rattling, and an unsettled feel while driving. If the cabin feels like it's shaking too much, have the mounts checked. Replacing them can make your car feel new again. Now let's get back to diesel drivers. Diesel engines are built tough, but they have their quirks like glow plugs. These help start the engine when it's cold. If your diesel struggles to start or blows white smoke at startup, glow plugs could be the problem. Replacing them isn't expensive, but it makes a big difference in winter. And then there's the DPF, the diesel particulate filter. It traps soot from your exhaust. It's meant to clean itself during long drives at motorway speeds. That's called regeneration. But if you only do short city trips, the DPF clogs. A warning light will pop up, ignore it too long, and you're looking at a costly replacement. Sometimes all it takes is a 30-minute motorway drive to fix it. Diesel fuel systems also have water separators. These collect water from contaminated fuel. Most have a small valve at the bottom. Open it regularly and drain the water. Neglect this step and water can corrode parts or mess with combustion. It's true that diesel engines usually have longer maintenance intervals, but when something goes wrong, the repairs are often brutal. EGR valves, high pressure fuel pumps, or turbo issues. These are expensive fixes. That's why small, regular steps save thousands in the long run. And always use top quality diesel. Cheap, low-grade fuel accelerates clogging and injector wear. Now, before you pick up the spanner, a few safety reminders. Never work on a hot engine. Always let it cool down. If you're jacking up the car, use proper jack stands. Never trust just the jacks. Wear gloves. Use eye protection and disconnect the battery if you're touching sensors or ignition parts. And when you're done, don't just pour old coolant or oil down the drain. Recycle it. Most auto shops accept it. What can you expect after this? In many cases, you'll feel the difference immediately. The engine 
and idles more steadily, the throttle feels responsive. Acceleration becomes smoother without those awkward flat spots. Fuel economy improves, even if it's just slightly. And maybe most importantly, you regain confidence in your car. It no longer feels like it's on the verge of giving up.